We are live. My name is Jamie J. I'm the CEO and founder of Bottleneck Distant Assistance. This is Live with Bottleneck. Proud to be your host to help you stop the bottleneck in your business. I'm super excited today to introduce you to Mr. Gordon McDougal. So don't go away. We'll be right back in about 38 seconds. So please stay tuned and uh, yeah, let's have some fun here with Gordon. Uh, you're going to like this conversation. We'll talk to you in about 38 seconds. doing? My name is Jamie J. I'm the host of Live with Bottleneck. I'm also the CEO and founder of Bottleneck Distant Assistance, where we help stop the bottleneck in your business and your life. And by the way, I'm also the author of Quit Repeating Yourself. I'm really happy about that. We worked really hard and uh, glad to have that out. But I want to tell you the main reason why you need to be staying tuned today. And by the way, if you're watching on Facebook, LinkedIn, or YouTube and you have a, com a comment or a suggestion, please ask away while we're live. If you're seeing this in the replay and you wanna ask uh, Gordon a question, just leave it in the notes there in the chat and or the comment section, and I'll make sure to forward those to them. If you have not gone to streamyard.com forward slash Facebook, in order to leave a comment there, you have to do that. Otherwise, it just shows up in the comment section and I won't see it until after uh, we've already gone live. So if you wanna participate in the conversation, please, by all means, do so. But without uh, any further ado, let's go ahead and get started in the conversation today. And I'm gonna be talking with Gordon McDougal. He's the CEO of Tezzy Advisory Inc. And we're gonna be talking about ideas to start or grow your business can appear in the most unique ways. I think that's pretty cool. And why, oh, why can uh, Gordon help you stop the bottleneck in your business? Let me tell you. <laughs> As a stockbroker in the 1980s, and, and I'm sorry about the image quality here. It looks a little uh, pixelated on my end, but I know what it says. <laughs> As a stockbroker in the 1980s, Gordon learned about the world of companies and finances, and then a friend approached him with the idea of starting a company. 30 some odd years later, and after several startups, reorganizations, and a lot of fundraising, he loves being an entrepreneur and coaching entrepreneurs. And I can tell you, Gordon is a pretty fantastic fellow, has a wonderful outlook on life, extremely intelligent. So make sure you tune in today and please ask questions. So without any further ado, please allow me to introduce you to Mr. Gordon McDougall. How are you, sir? I'm great, Jamie. Thank you very much. What a great intro. Hi, thank you. Yeah, this is fantastic. I had commented in the uh, green room prior to coming on how nice your blue coat just dressed up the whole area. So <laughs> it's pretty, pretty fantastic. <laughs> well, I, I thought I'd show up a, a little bit dressy today. Hey, it's fantastic. I love it. Um, I even dressed up with a nice nice little t-shirt. You look, you look great. Jim. You look great. <laughs> well, I wonder before we begin, you have a, a slide presentation for us, but I wonder, um, would you like me to start the slide presentation now, or you want to talk a little bit about who you are and where you came from? Well, uh, Jamie, there's, there's a couple of things I'd love to, to talk about, um, uh, and I'll try and be brief. Uh, you did a wonderful job of uh, sharing my background and my passion for entrepreneurship and, and uh, the things I love about that. And one of the reasons I, I picked this topic uh, to talk about is there's so much advice out there <clears throat> about um, how to grow your business, marketing, uh, financing, uh, great stories from other entrepreneurs you can learn from. Uh, there, there's so much information out there about sort of the, the process of doing something with your business. <clears throat> and one of the things I really enjoy doing is, is helping with the ideation or helping entrepreneurs or uh, either they already have a business or they have an idea that they'd like to have a business. And I love the, I love the process of helping them to find that idea that really sparks their interest. You know, like I love your story about how you started bottleneck. You know, you saw some pain in the world. You saw 
the pain entrepreneurs and business people are having. And you did something about it. You did something really, really cool about it. You did something that I think is, is, is amazing. So that's why I wanted to give this particular talk today. Um, you know, if anybody has questions about other areas of entrepreneurship, I'm always happy to, to dive in and talk about those. Uh, don't mind if conversations take a left turn or a right turn, uh, whatever, whatever works. So that's, that, well, that, was, that was sort of what was on my mind to start with. Well, thank you, Gordon. Um, and I have to tell you firsthand, um, you just you have, you have such a wealth of knowledge. Uh, you're so kind um, and you have such admiration for the entrepreneurial principle. Um, I think that's why I'm so attracted to learning from you and 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 just following you. I think it's just fantastic. And and I, I don't say that lightly because, uh, you know, in this line of work, we get to meet a ton of people um, and every once in a while. It, it's it's really refreshing to meet someone that's been there, done that, and is still is is uh, humble and uh, approachable and makes other people feel good. If that you're if gonna, that makes any you're sense, gonna, you're going to make me blush, Jamie. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's it's honest. It's honest feedback. I think you're fantastic. So, well, uh, without you. any further ado, I'll I'll see if I can get this. Uh, Get this uh, screen sharing going here because this is a, this is another first for us. But I think I think we figured it out. Let's give it uh, a go. Let me let me let me see if we can get this thing going here. And uh, I got to put it on present mode here in just a second. Oh, I think that looks it's, it's already rocking and rolling, isn't it? I think we're there. And uh, you've got control of the screen, Jamie. So if you don't mind, I'll just give you some prompts to to change slides if that's okay. That sounds great. Yeah, kick it off. Yeah. So. We've already talked a bit about my background, being a stockbroker, first startup in the 1980s. Um, but one of the things I like to emphasize is that I've, I've been involved with uh, some really amazing, successful businesses, but I think more importantly, some spectacular failures. Like, and and that's where so much learning takes place when you when you bump into obstacles or you have things go sideways. Uh, so I, I just wanted to, you know, let folks know that it's not just about oh everything went great and wonderful. Because in business, as we all know, things often, obstacles come up, things go sideways, pandemics happen, things happen that are out of our control. So I think I'll just let that slide speak for itself. And then if you want to go to the next one, that'd be great. Yeah. No, so here comes the test. Look at that. Look at that. <laughs> we so, did it, Gord. <laughs> I, I, I think we can just stop right here and call it a success. What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> I know I want to hear more though. <laughs> okay, okay. So we'll keep going. So this this talk is about ideas to start or grow your business. And as you'll see as I as I get into this presentation, they can appear in like seriously interesting ways. And often when you're not expecting it. Next, next clicker or click. Sometimes it's a struggle. Click. Sometimes it is super clear and obvious. I think Jamie, in your business, once the idea got in front of your eyeballs, you went. This is so obvious to me. Yep. Click. Now, I hope it's okay to use a bit of profanity. I, I, I really struggled with putting this, this slide into this little deck. But there's, a, there's an international movement called Fuck Up Nights. And it's one of the most powerful things for entrepreneurship. It was started in Mexico City about 15 years ago. It's now a global movement. It's in hundreds of cities. And it's where entrepreneurs or business people or sometimes athletes get up and they talk about their biggest uh, fuck up. And it's, it's, it's so empowering, room full of, last, when I presented the last time, I think there was 300 people in the room. And afterwards, the energy in the room is so abuzz because it's now about real stuff, people solving real problems. And so I guess this is in a way, Jamie's a bit of a plug for fuck up nights. Uh, they're, <laughs> on, they're, they're online. Um, Anyway, this story is about being at the right place at the right time. And my last presentation at, at Fuck Up Nights, one of my co-presenters was a young man who talk, talked, told a story about this consumer electronics company he'd started. And the process for being a presenter at Fuck Up Nights is about a two month process where you're actually practicing your pitch, developing a, a slide deck. Uh, there's a real format to it. So I got to, we, so you spent a lot of time together. I got to know this guy. We got to know each other really well in this in this process of the build up to fuck up nights. Next slide, please. Sure. And that led me to spending some time with this young man. And uh, 
uh, we started talking about the challenges he'd faced in his previous business, but they still had all this incredible technology and things they wanted to to reformat into an, into a new business. And so I was I was a, played a fairly significant role in them reorganizing, restructuring the business, uh, getting it on track for its next uh, iteration, its next life, if you would. And it, what it led to is this, this company called CE Brands. It's now a global powerhouse in consumer electronics. So the point, just to keep within the context of what we're talking about here. So one idea came to me for a business I got deeply involved with by being a presenter at a, at a function, at a, at a public speaking function. And um, our backgrounds just mesh, you know, pieces started to click together as, as so often happens when you're looking to start or grow a business. Click. So now CE brand sells in over countries, over 70 countries, click. Um, and one of the cool things about the business model for this is we license global brands like Kodak and Motorola, Duracell, and we actually put, market those products that our product, we manufacture, we design them, but we market them under these global brand names. So I'm just sharing this as a bit of uh, context for what we're talking about. Click. Another way a business came to me was my son, uh, his, his mom is an amazing photographer mm -hmm. and she was going through a bit of a rough patch. And uh, so my son decided that he would do something really cool and he would actually go and sell some of his mom's artwork. And it just lit her up so much. It just put a big smile on her face. And as part of that, I started looking and or he and I started looking and saying, well, maybe there's a business here for artists that want to sell their, 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 their work and f fulfilling the role of, of the business for it. So this, it was the germination of an idea that said, well, maybe there's probably lots of artists out there that are in similar situations as moms. Mm -hmm. And so if you go to the next slide, and that led to a global art business. Now we now have about 20 artists in six or seven different countries. We're selling in Australia, US and Canada. But that's, that's how this idea came. It was something really practical that happened in our family life and led to us start creating this global business. And now we've got people that work with us in Australia and Portugal and South America. And it's just, and I think part of the point of this is it's just sort of paying attention to what's going on around you and then brainstorming things. So if I go to the next slide. So I think the key to, any business to solve a problem. And businesses are here to solve some kind of a problem. A pain next point, slide. yeah. That's a pain point. Slide, next slide. So in the case of the Art Reverie uh, business, uh, there's thousands of brilliant talented artists that either don't want to deal with the business side uh, or don't know how, but they'd like to make money from their artwork. They, they'd much prefer to focus their time and energy on their art than whatever job they happen to be in that's not directly related to art. So. That was, that was the pain point. So we take care of all the business of selling art, and then we send the money. Hmm. It's a pretty simple business. Yeah. Next, next slide, sir. So one of the questions I'd love to ask, I'm hoping someone might pop something in the, in the chat or the comments. So what problem would you like to solve? Love to talk about that. Maybe we'll just, we're going fairly fast, Jimmy. So maybe if you don't mind, I'm just going to flip this over on you. Sure. Maybe you could briefly tell the story about bottleneck. Like, how did how did that ideation happen? Yeah, you know, and, and thank you for that because um, that is it. That is that is the biggest question. What what is the problem? Uh, what's the biggest pain point? And you know, uh, the biggest pain point I had uh, was pointed out to me uh, very lovingly and caringly, uh, albeit over time would have become a lot worse by my loving wife. Jamie, you have to stop working six or seven days a week. And I mean, I would go to bed at two or three in the morning and I'm up at seven or eight or nine, or sometimes I'd stay up till four trying to finish a project and then not wake up until noon the next day. So I'd waste the next day's morning. It was, it was, it was, it was brutal. Um, and I kept thinking to myself, man, how, what do I need to do? I finally went out and uh, didn't think I could afford to hire anybody, but I did finally hire somebody. And that's when 
I started like, huh, this works. It was really scary, but man, the pain was so much that I needed to really get that help. Um, and that I was just working myself to death, I believe. And I was part of a mastermind group and they said, wow, Jamie, how did you do that? Like, I want to be part of that. And so they would say, how did you find this? And I'd say, here you go, here you go. And they would ask me and pretty soon they said, Jamie, why don't you start a business doing this? This is a great service. And I'm like, you think so? <laughs> and uh, yeah, lo and behold, I had had experience for so long um, outsourcing uh, now, now 15 years. That it, it was like, yeah, duh, hello. <laughs> Why don't you do that? And so, as you said, through several iterations and, and learning and overcoming new challenges and pain points, we've just kind of continued building this thing. But, but in essence, that's where it started. It started with me, kind of like you and your son, um, you know, with the, with the art reverie. That was completely born out of challenge of of an artist being able to monetize their passion yeah and you you make you make um, such a great point of quite frankly probably the main point of this whole discussion jamie it's it's very rarely is it the idea is like a light bulb that goes on and that's the thing and off you go and the next thing you know you you look back 15 years you got a business it's my experience it's very typical to have an idea and then you start brainstorming or, or checking or testing that idea out with discussions with people or make, maybe you make a, a minimal product or you get some way of getting the business moving. And someone comes along and says, oh, well, did you think about, just like your friend said, did you think about creating that as a business? And I find it's one of the fascinating conversations, some of the fascinating conversations I have with people is on a regular basis. So you're now in the business of whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And you ask somebody, like I just asked you, Jamie, about what their story is about how it evolved or got to that point. And it, it always reminds me of a ping pong ball it's, or, a, or a ball, a, you know, cue ball on a, on a pool table. It kind of bounced over here and then it went over there and then it bounced over here. And, and then and the, you're just starting to get more and more clarity around that idea. Yeah. In essence, that's what it is, because you, you're you kind of bounce on ideas. Let's try this. Does it work? Well, it works, but this needs to be improved or uh, that doesn't really yeah. work. We probably need to go in a different direction. And, the, you know, the challenging part for me on that is disappointing someone else, um, perhaps setting the expectations too high, thinking, wow, I'm really excited. And you kind of let your excitement take over of, you know, trying something out. And I've learned over time to maintain the excitement level, but also say, hey, I'm not exactly sure <laughs> if this is the best way to go about this, but would you test, test this out? Or, hey, what do you think? I'd really, really, really love to hear your feedback. And since we started adopting that model, I think it's really kind of helped us out a little bit. And it gave, it gave us the confidence once we were able to address some real life situations, which, by the way, is pretty dang scary sometimes putting something out there. Um, <laughs> But being able to finally get the feedback and make those tweaks and and go for it, you have so much more confidence now because it's it's tested. It's you know it's it's something that's been put out there and you've received the feedback and and now you may have as Jeffrey Green says, cross the chasm. You know you have your sphere of influence that'll be honest with you and give you that feedback. But it is is it viable? You know, and it's going to take a little bit of time to kind of. All of a sudden, you get that first inquiry of someone you never met before. You have no idea that's very interested in this service because they've either heard about it from someone else or maybe they came across a website or they've done something and said, I'm really interested in what you've created and offered. Can I get that too? And yeah, that's and then, like... Phew. yeah. And you, you bring up such an important point, Jamie, because typically ideas start with a small circle of people. It might even be only just one person gets an idea in their head. And then you share that idea with somebody else. And then maybe you engage someone to help you bring that, that idea along. And then you bring more people. And quite often, it's, it, it, it's not very long before you've got a number of people involved in your idea or in your business. And the communication aspect of that is so critical. I mean, you mentioned one thing that's, that just put a big smile on my face. It's having the, um, 
being brave enough to share an idea in itself can be a very scary proposition. Um, people may shoot your idea down. They may even ridicule you. Um, so it's, it's a scary thing to do, but it's also when you get to the other side of the scariness, it's also incredibly rewarding to have looked back and said, well, I actually crossed that chasm or I crossed that, that really hard bridge to get across. But I, the point I really want to make here is as you're bringing your idea through to fruition or bringing it along is there's a lot of communication involved. You have to keep people informed as to what's going on what the feedback is because the next thing you know you're bringing a, a larger and larger group or team of people along with you yeah you know the other thing is there's um i'm a big proponent proponent of, of passion being passionate about mm -hmm. a certain things and and finding it now is bottleneck distance and assistance what i'm passionate about maybe but i don't think that's the true passion the true passion for me is hearing people say thank you jamie you know i'm not working on a saturday that phone wrestling away, the wife saying, thank you, Jamie, for giving me my husband back. That's the passion that the, the, it's, it's almost the outcome. And it's just that bottleneck is something I enjoy because it's a vehicle to get that. I don't know. There's a dopamine dump of that. I don't know what you call it, but it's a, it's Absolutely. such a good feeling to have created something out of scratch to, to do that. But, but passion also gets me through the 25% of the just crap. <laughs> well, and you bring up an, another really good point that's uh, I, I think worth sharing. In a lot of the coaching work I do, especially with, with it's not all entrepreneurs, but it's mainly entrepreneurs. One of the things I really try and emphasize is ask for help. And people, for the most part, hopefully nobody's offended by this comment, but most people really suck at asking for help. Um, but there's an interesting, there's an interesting flip side to that, because what I tell people I'm coaching is, well, how does it feel when someone asks you for your help? And typically the response is, well, it feels really good. Like, I, you know, I love contributing to someone else's world and it makes me feel good about myself because I'm, I'm doing something for another human being, for another person. And I have found in, the, in this realm of entrepreneurship, it's one of the things that a lot of entrepreneurs really either suck at or struggle with. And then, it's been so much fun um, after having had a conversation or two about this with, with an entrepreneur or a team of entrepreneurs and they go and test it. They go and say to a bunch of people, Hey, I've got this thing I'm trying to do. And I, you know, do you think you could help me a bit? Maybe it's in this area or that area or just generally. And they come back a week or two later, a month later and say, Holy cow. I had like people just were ecstatic to give me some help. It's kind of cool. It really is. Uh, I, you're right. It, you know, I, I, th I think I know why people suck at asking for help is we're so dang prideful. Absolutely. Um, and, and so to kind of shed some of that and find the humility or, or in within ourselves, I think, I think that's one of the biggest hurdles. Um, and so many people that quite frankly have the guts, the innards to, do this entrepreneurial thing or, or create something anew. It's, you know, it's like their baby. It's their, it's, Hey, I did this. I've got all the answers and, and uh, boy, oh boy is it's so much. And the other thing I might, I, I think maybe is a problem for people asking for help is they don't want to release uh, or give away too much information. <laughs> and, yeah. and uh, uh, I, I don't know. Can you address that? I I have some thoughts, but I'd love to hear your thoughts. Yeah, yeah. My thoughts about that, Jamie, are really simple. I I, I faced that dilemma more times than I can remember. Mm. The entrepreneur is holding on tight to the information because he doesn't want someone to steal his or her. Here, he or she doesn't want anyone else to steal her idea. Mm. And the fact of the matter is that most people, sorry, other people, uh, they're too lazy. You know, I, I share all my ideas. I share them very openly. I encourage the entrepreneurs that I work with to share your ideas openly because the, in my opinion, it's, you know, it's only my opinion, the possibility of something positive coming out of that. Someone saying like, oh, well, you're in the, whatchamacallit business. And if you talk to so-and-so because he could be a great, he or she could be a great customer or a strategic partnership. But if you hold all that information tight and no one knows that they, there's an opportunity to help, 
uh, Lord knows what what opportunities you miss. Well, and and I absolutely <laughs> that's exactly what I feel, and I also feel that um, you're you're missing out on a lot of opportunities, like you said that you miss, but just the little tiny things that you don't know it's it can help you so much it's not even funny in the relationships you build as you said oh, i just I, completely I, agree with I'll, that. I'll give you a, probably one of the best examples of that jamie there was a, a young a team of young entrepreneurs and their business their business is using drones to spot um spot fires and for in forest fires so it's a very, on the surface, a very simple business, lots of technology involved, lots of knowledge. Um, but I was coaching them and uh, this a couple of few years ago and uh, they were having trouble getting uh, into the marketplace. They'd, they'd had some success getting a few uh, jobs. And I happened to have a friend of mine who worked very closely with the minister, um, uh, the U.S., and the guy in charge of forestry service for the United States. It was just one of those bizarre connections. So I picked up the phone, phoned my friend who has this friend, told him exactly what I was trying to help with. And he connected these entrepreneurs to this very powerful U.S. politician. And within three or four months, they were actually doing um, fire spotting in Oregon, California, I mean, all over the place. And their business just took off like a rocket. Now, if they'd held that tight and never shared with me what their 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 problems were, what they're trying to it never would have occurred to me to pick up the phone and make that one phone call. Yeah. Thank you for bringing that up. I think that's uh, something important. I'm wondering um, if I can kind of segue into uh, we're getting too close to uh, the time and I want to be respectful of your time, Perfect. but as, as, as we move in and segue, I'm wondering if, where is someone at um, today where they would say, man, I wish, I wish Gord was here to kind of help me out. Uh, what's the question again, Jamie? Sorry. Where, where is someone, um, startup running a business, where, where are they at in their entrepreneurial journey when they say, man, I really wish a Gord was here right now to help me. <laughs> well, um, o- over the last 30 years or so, Jamie, I'm super excited about early stage companies that have the ability to get to some size. I used to say they, to the companies that could scale. <clears throat> Now I'm just interested in companies that can, you know, get get to a reasonable size. You know, maybe that's five million in revenues or ten million in revenues, which those are those are massive uh, goals to achieve by themselves. <laughs> and the other other area where, um, and it's probably the part where I, I, I now I'm struggling with ego, where I where I where I can I think add a ton of value, and that's businesses get into into different kinds of trouble all the time. And when a company's struggling, like the consumer electronic company that I, <clears throat> that I played a major role in, um, I love to help those entrepreneurs because they're, they're, they're now in a place where they've, it could be their livelihoods at stake, <clears throat> excuse me, their business is at stake, uh, the employee's employment is at stake. They're, the stakes are usually quite high. So I, I love, I, I hate to call them turnarounds because that's, that's such a, such a catchphrase but so the, what i love to find are companies that i call they're damaged but not broken mm. so they, they got problems but they're fixable but i jamie as you've you know i've done a bit of, of work together as you know i just love the process of working with entrepreneurs and doing a bit of coaching or opening some doors or helping you know with you know I mean, my areas of expertise are around finance capital raising strategy. Uh, you know, I've been the CEO of several companies. <clears throat> I've been a team member on, you know, probably more companies now that I can, can count. And uh, I think the only thing I ask is that I, I check with people who would like to do some work with me is, are they coachable? Uh, and there are some human beings in the world who are not coachable, but if someone's open to ideas and they're, they're coachable and they want to learn, Bring it on. I think that's fantastic. And thank you for um, sharing your knowledge with so many uh, people, uh, you know, that, that are in need of your help. It's, it's, it's challenging sometimes to find the right fit 
and the right person. Um, uh, and it's a tough decision sometimes when you get to a certain point as, as a leader, you have people counting on you and vendors and, and that you have relationships with and clients, you know, that are uh, counting on continued good service and support. And so oftentimes the decisions, uh, while they may seem easy in the beginning, um, uh, or maybe seem difficult in the beginning, um, I think you just have to um, find somebody that you really, really uh, enjoy being around and um, open yourself up for learning. Yeah, no, I would say the key in the relationship, in those kind of relationships, in these types of relationships, Jamie, is trust. Yeah. And it's not, it's not just trust in the person, it's trust in their, their knowledge and the type of advice that they're suggesting or the type of input they're putting into the business. Uh, one thing that makes me a little crazy is when I see a business that's been <clears throat> badly coached or has bad mentorship, um, it makes me a little crazy because it, it, but business is a lot of fun, you know, and, and it should be a lot of fun and it's also really challenging. It should be enjoyable, but most of all, it, it should bring uh, satisfaction and, Actually, the most important point, Jamie, is it's a serious game. People's lives are impacted by it. They've got families to feed. They've got mortgages to pay. They've got career paths. They, there's so many impacts. You know, the ripple of a 10-person company, you know, is eas easily 40 or 50 or 60 people. That's, that's a, a person that employs 10 people. I mean, the, the ripples are just so big. Anyway, I'm, I'm rambling on about it, but I think I've made my point. No, yeah, no, I, ramble on. <laughs> no, thank you. Um, yeah, so, so what is the best way for people to reach out to you um, if they want to chat with you? Email for sure. Email for sure. And that's uh, gord.mcdougall at teziaadvisory.com. You got it. Yeah, well, Tezia, right. Tezia actually stands for speed in about five different languages. I like, to, I like to move fast. That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, you and I have got to have another conversation here pretty soon. I'm missing chatting with you. <laughs> Anytime, my friend. Anytime. Uh, I mean, we're having a conversation now, but but I want to be selfish and and uh, have have another conversation with you. And, and I I highly encourage other people to reach out. Um, if you're watching this, most of the time you're watching this in the replay. Please reach out. Uh, you can email Gord at gord.mcdougall at teziadvisory.com. Gord, is there anything else you'd like to say before we wrap? I think we've done it all. We've had a really good conversation, Jamie. I think I'm good for good, good here. Well, fantastic. Can you hold on real quick and I'll, I'll wrap up? I've been talking with my good friend, Gord McDougall. Um, he goes by Gord, but he's the CEO of Tezi Advisory, Inc. He'd like to be emailed at gord.mcdougall at teziadvisory.com. Go ahead and reach out to him. I highly encourage you to reach out and just have a conversation um, he's also on LinkedIn. He's also on Twitter. There's different ways you can reach out to him. He is an amazing, incredibly talented, uber smart. Yeah, you, you will never hear him say that himself. But uh, as you can imagine, I've talked to a lot of people in my day, and I would put Gord right up there at the top uh, with regards to experience, kindness, humility, uh, knowledgeable, uh, these are all adjectives that I would uh, wholeheartedly lend uh, to Gord's name. So highly encourage you to reach out to him. And uh, we'll go ahead and get ready to wrap up here. If you'd like to hear other uh, uh, conversations uh, with amazing people to learn how you can break through the bottleneck in your business today, go to bottleneck.online slash BTV. That stands for Bottleneck Television. <laughs> and you can go there and learn more about it. Uh, we're also on YouTube. Please go subscribe to us on YouTube. We really want to hit that 100 subscription mark and we're getting really close since we just launched the channel. Um, also, feel free to uh, check out my new book. You can, you can go to quitrepeatingyourself.com and that's the name of my book. And I talk about how today's leaders are using systems and processes to grow their business the right way. And you can go learn more by quitrepeatingyourself.com. If you want to just go and not give me your name and email like you would if you went to this site to get a book, you can go to anywhere the books are sold, Barnes & Noble, Amazon, pretty much anywhere. 
Um, again, I want to say thank you to Gordon McDougall, CEO of Tezzy Advisory, Inc. We talked about ideas to start or grow your business can appear in the most unique ways through a nice little presentation. If you missed my previous episode, I had a great conversation with Vikrant Sharia. He's the CEO and founder of bestsellingbook.com. And we talked about ways to skyrocket your business and build authority in any expertise. That was an incredible conversation. He works with authors to get them on the US, uh, USA Today, uh, they're in negotiations with New York Times bestselling author, and then uh, a couple other things, but he helps you on Amazon. Really, really great person. If you have an idea for a book and you want to write a book, he'll help you out that way too. So I encourage you to go check that out if you're interested in writing your own book. Uh, it was a wonderful conversation. Again, my name is Jamie J. I'm the CEO and founder of Bottleneck Distant Assistance. I'm also the host of Here Live with Bottleneck. And uh, I hope that Gord was able to help stop the bottleneck in your business today. Please reach out to him one more time. It's gord.mcdougall. And I'll go ahead and put it up there for you one more time so you have the visual. Gord.mcdougall at Tizia Advisor. Dot com. Tezia, as he said in multiple languages, stands for speed. So he likes to get you going really quick. Thank you so much for tuning in. Have a wonderful day. And don't forget, create your own ripple.